Hi, everyone. I'm doing a podcast style recording today, though I will have relevant images on the screen. I've had the same laptop since my first year of university, and it can't process video like it used to, so I'm saving up for a new laptop and will hopefully have that by the next video. This is a list of the staff that work in the Equity and Inclusion Office at the University of British Columbia. Here we go. Associate Vice President, Equity and Inclusion. Engagement Strategist with the Equity and Inclusion Office. Project Manager. Project Manager. Director, Partnerships and Organizational Strategy. Communications Manager. Communications Coordinator. Manager, Institutional Planning and Evaluation. Administration Manager. Planning and Evaluation Strategist, Planning and Evaluation Strategist, and Planning and Evaluation Strategist. Assistant, Inclusion Action Plan Development and Research, Equity Facilitator, Equity Facilitator, Equity Facilitator Race and Cultural Competencies, Educational Strategist, Student Diversity Initiative, Strategist, Research and Evaluation Associate. The diversity bureaucracies at Canadian universities really range from being non-existent to being extreme, and obviously this is an example of a university with an extreme diversity bureaucracy. Now, I'm not usually one to make proclamations unless I feel very comfortable that what I'm saying is true, but in this case, I really believe that all diversity, equity, and inclusion offices at Canadian universities need to be shut down. If I were in charge of educational policy, that would be my number one priority. Because there are a lot of scams going on at university. There is a lot of wasted money. There are a lot of things that need to be fixed. But closing diversity and inclusion offices is such an obvious thing that needs to be done. It's strange to me that students know they are paying way too much tuition money, yet they never take on the bureaucracies at the university. Usually the students say, we need more government subsidies for post-secondary education but they never seem to want to trim the bureaucratic fat within the university itself. When it comes to these offices, the work that they actually do is usually kept under wraps because a lot of it is confidential in nature. So when they state on their websites that they are doing things like promoting inclusivity and building welcoming communities and celebrating diversity, everyone kind of thinks, oh, okay, um, th that sounds nice. I'm sure all the money they get is going to a good cause. But trust me, people, the diversity offices are running a racket. They are scammers. And FYI, what they're trying to do now is co-opt the word human rights. So, for example, they will call the diversity offices the human rights and equity office, for example. Now, let's talk money. Wilfrid Laurier University, my alma mater, recently received $384,700 of taxpayer money from the federal government to hire a senior equity, diversity, and inclusion advisor and other staff. Great, just what that place needs. In the province of Ontario, there is something called the Sunshine List, where you can see which public sector employees receive over $100,000 a year in salary. So let me read you uh, the 2018 salaries of the top diversity officials in Ontarian universities. The University of Guelph's Assistant Vice President Diversity and Human Rights makes $199,729. University of Waterloo Associate Vice President Human Rights, Equity and Inclusion, $180,992. University of Toronto Mississauga Director of Equity, Diversity and Inclusion, $106,394. Western University Director Equity Services, $113,053. York University Executive Director Center for Human Rights, $130,243. Carleton University Director Equity Services, $103,663. Lakehead University Human Rights and Equity Director, $143,085.70. McMaster University Associate Vice President Equity and Inclusion, $131,184.61, and the kind of weird part was over $15,000 in taxable benefits, um, which was a real outlier. Also at McMaster, the Equity and Inclusion Office's Senior Manager Education Outreach and Support Program, $115,155.71,
There are two senior human rights officers at McMaster University with uh, one having $102,398 and the other having $103,373. OCAD University Director, Diversity and Equity Initiatives, $123,038. Oh, and at this university, OCAD University, the diversity office is called the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Sustainability Initiatives, which I find very telling because I personally lament that the environmental movement has been lumped in with social justice warrior pet issues, um, but it has been. Anyways, let's move on to Queen's University, where the Associate Vice Principal of Human Rights, Equity, and Inclusion makes $144,771. The Deputy Provost, Academic Operations and Inclusion, makes $326,684.99. And the Educational Developer at the Queen's Center for Teaching and Learning, who supports educators in designing, planning, and reviewing their courses and academic programs through an equity and inclusivity lens, makes $104,000. $449.19. The Ryerson University Vice President Equity and Community Inclusion made $300,000. Also at Ryerson University, the Executive Director, Office of the Vice President Equity and Community Inclusion made $115,989. And the Director of Human Rights Services made $189,375. I didn't put the names of these people because I'll get accused of doxing by people who don't know what doxing is, but all of this is on the public record. But remember, these are only the salaries of the officials who make over $100,000 at Ontarian universities. These salaries I just read do not include universities in any other province or the salaries of the communication coordinators, the, the strategists of the diversity offices, the facilitators, who, you know, probably all make 50 to 60k a year. And all these people do are promote the use of gender pronouns, preach about how white people ruined everything and were on stolen land, and they make training sessions so that everyone else in the university is forced to think that way too. When talking about diversity offices, the question of women's centers and LGBTQ centers comes up as well. These are usually funded through your student union fees and run by student unions. Now, I'll tell you, I never set foot in the university women's center not during my undergrad years and not during my grad years. I think I just knew subconsciously that this is just not a place that I would like to be. Um, I kind of thought it would be full of women who were kind of unstable or something, and I know that sounds kind of mean, but like even back when I was a pretty staunch feminist and didn't shave my legs, I still felt an intuitive aversion to the women's center. As for the LGBTQ centers, again, I've never been inside one, but I've obviously seen the events they put on, and I believe that they are centers of radicalization. The people who hang out in LGBTQ centers, it's kind of a cult, right? They have the same opinions, they speak in the same manner, they usually all value sexual promiscuity. But again, these are the activists who have a tendency to hang out in the LGBTQ centers. I'm sure that just like I am a woman who has never set foot in a woman's center, there is a gay or trans person who has never set foot in the LGBTQ center. Now, I really think what we need is someone who's going to expose the diversity bureaucracy system. So if you are someone who wants a career change in your life or is about to enter university, here's what I think you should do. You should pursue a degree and then a master's degree and perhaps even a PhD in, a, in an ethnic studies or a gender studies field. And then you should try to get a job as a diversity officer at a university, or maybe even the head diversity officer. And then, um, you know, take notes on everything that's happening. And then five years later, or 10 years later, write a book about it. Write a book about everything that's happening in the offices and expose them. I think that's what we need. I know I'm going to get accused of, like, being a spy or something. But, you know, when there's a, when there's a corrupt system... Someone needs to do something about it. And obviously, I can't do anything about it because um, I'll never get hired in a diversity office. So if you're someone who's so far flown under the radar, consider this. Anyways, that's all I've got for now. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you learned something new. And goodbye.